Hey ladies and gentlemen, it's Drew with GeoArm and I am back to talk to you about the 2GIG GC2E and how to program in the SMKT8E encrypted wireless smoke heat and freeze detector into the panel as a heat device. In this case, the only thing that's really going to change from the previous video is this is going to be programmed in as a loop 2 instead of a loop 1. So uh, super easy and also you're probably going to change your descriptor. So we'll go ahead and we'll get this programmed in. Hit security, then you want to hit menu, and then you want to go to toolbox. Once in toolbox, go ahead and enter your installer code. In my case, it is 1561. Then we're going to hit the right arrow twice. At this point, hit installer toolbox, and then system configuration. Once you have entered system configuration, it should uh, say Q1, select RF sensor. In my previous video, I programmed this device in as a smoke, so I'm going to move this to zone 2 and program in on zone 2. Once I've selected that, I press the down arrow. It wants to know the sensor type. In this case, it will be programmed in exactly like a smoke. It is a 24-hour fire device for heat. Go ahead and hit the down arrow. It's going to ask for the equipment code. All E-series sensors start with the number 2. So in this case, for the smoke detector, it is a 2058 E-series smoke detector for the USA. This is not the Canadian version. So go ahead and hit the down arrow once you've put in 2058 for your equipment code. Now it's going to ask you to select the RF uh, or enter your RF serial number. It's, it wants the, the TXID and it wants you to manually enter it. I don't like doing it like that. So we're going to go ahead and hit shift and then we're going to hit learn so that we know for a fact that this panel you know, catches this device. All I have to do here is just tamper my device and it learns in because my device is actually uh, already been disconnected from the batteries. You just want to verify that your TX ID is correct. Mine is 03199937. So at this point, I'll go ahead and I will throw the cover back on and I'll put this over to the side. Hit OK. And then it'll show you your serial number again. You just go ahead and hit the down arrow. Now it wants to know the age of your equipment. This is a new device, so I'm just going to leave this as new. And at this point, it also wants to know the sensor loop number once you press the down arrow. As I said, a heat detector will be zone 2, so we'll go ahead and hit the right arrow and make this a zone 2. Once that's been selected, hit the down arrow. And now it wants to know the voice descriptor. So you're going to get, you're going to hit insert, and you're going to hit the right arrow until you get to heat or whatever you want to program it as. Uh, in my case, I'm just going to program it as something random, so I'll just call it control. This will be my control heat. So I'll hit the down arrow. Now it wants to know if, if this device is going to send its signal or reported signal to the central station. I always say yes. If you want to do some sort of local setup, you don't have to do this. Uh, you can press the right arrow to disable it. I do want it enabled, so I'm going to press the down arrow at this point to confirm that. Now you should see select RF sensor 2 supervised. Uh, I do want that enabled, meaning that the panel is going to be monitoring for tamper conditions, low batteries, RF supervision issues, that kind of thing. Hit the down arrow. Now it's going to ask you if you want this device to chime. I do not because I don't, you know, heat and smoke and temp don't need to chime. Hit the down arrow. It's going to give you your sensor summary. It'll go over everything that you've programmed. You can press the down arrow and the up arrow to look at it. And on the bottom, you're going to see a left arrow, a right arrow, edit current, edit next, and skip. Now, if you want to edit this device that we just programmed, you would just hit edit current. It'll take you back in there and you can change anything that you need to change. Edit next will take you to the very next zone for you to start programming. And skip is what we're going to do here because we don't want to do anything further. I'm going to go ahead and hit end after I've hit skip. And then you will see a new screen pop up with a summary of system configuration. At the bottom, you'll see back, save changes, and exit. The save changes will have a check mark. You can uncheck that if you made mistakes and you don't want to save it. I do want to save it because I programmed in my zone. And then I'm going to hit exit after I uh, have checked that box. Now it's going to go through its reboot here. Uh, it takes a few seconds. It's normal for this to occur. Uh, once this is done rebooting, it'll come back up and I should be able to tamper this and show you guys that it is programmed into the panel. So here we go. All right, panel's back on, system ready. All we're going to do is trigger the tamper here. Now it tells us control tamper. We'll go ahead and we'll put the cover back on. Okay, and it's happy again. 
You can also press and hold this middle button down. It'll test the device, but it'll put it into a beeping condition. I really don't want to do that and hurt your ears. Uh, at this point, this device is programmed in and learned properly as a heat detector loop two. Uh, any questions or comments, please leave them below. Other than that, take care and have a great day. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube page and click the show more tab underneath the video where you can view valuable links pertaining to this product, similar how-to videos, and our low-cost, no-contract alarm monitoring services.